Hi everybody, how you are doing? Good day to you all. Welcome to another video on my channel. My name is Blessing and this is your Blessed Home TV. In today's video, I want to talk about the corruption scandal that is rocking the Niger Delta Development Commission. It's popularly called NDDC. And since last week, we've been hearing you know, allegations and counter allegations of all the corruption, uh, misappropriation of all the funds that was meant uh, for the Niger Delta people and the Niger Delta region. These few individuals have been accusing each other. Um, the Niger Delta, the former managing director of the Niger Delta, that is uh, Joy Nunien, and now the acting managing director. This is this man that uh, Ponde is a professor that uh, collapsed while they were asking him, just asking him questions. And also the minister of Niger Data Ministry, uh, that is the former governor of Akwaibum State uh, in the person of Akwaibum. So just in case you are here for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join me here. Thank you so much. And I'd like to say thank you to every one of you who already subscribed. Thank you so much. I appreciate So as I was saying, this Niger Data Development Commission was actually inaugurated by the former president of Nigeria in the person of Obasanjo. So when Obasanjo inaugurated, I think it was in 2000, then I was still in the university. So in 2008, the other president, uh, President Yaa Adua, founded the Niger Data Ministry. And the way he conceived it is that the Niger Data Development Commission will be working under, as a parastata, under this ministry of uh, Niger Data. So as we have it right now, Akpa Biyo, Guswil Akpa Biyo, is the Niger Data Minister. And then this Professor Ponde is the acting Niger Data Development Commission chairman. So the former chairman of the Niger Data NDDC chairman, that is this woman that we've been hearing the news since last week um you know she has um, you know said her own part of the corruptions that has happened so uh let me just let you hear a little bit of what this former uh, managing director has to say one of the issues raised yesterday against me was that we are i awarded a contract to myself without them knowing um, about it i'm sure that's what they told you people yesterday Nobody makes any payments in NTDC without God's Apatio's um, approval. When we first came to NTDC, on the day of going for the inauguration, he told me in the car that Madam MD, if you don't do what I say, the same pen with which I used to sign your letter, it will be the same pen that I will use to remove you. And guess what? Akbabio never signs any documents. He will always refuse to sign, but he will tell you to go and commit a fraud. For instance, he told me to go and raise a memo and give an emergency contract for flood victims. The facts will speak for itself. Now, to end this matter about the procurement process, I refuse to go with him to deceive Mr. President at the FED meeting. Because the Procurement Act says if I contravene any section of the Procurement Act, it's five years imprisonment without an option of fine. So my people, you heard from her, she's saying um, the misappropriation of the funds that happened under her watch, um, trying to basically exonerate herself that, you know, she is the good and righteous one and she was being forced to do whatever against her will, like you listen to her. So then comes this uh, Senate committee to try to find out the truth of what is going on. So they now invited this acting chairman of the Niger Data Commission, this Professor Pondi, to come and explain the budgets and the money that he's spending and how he's spending money that is not in the budget and, you know, just to give account of the 2019 budget and also you know to explain the money that he's spending in billions where he's getting it from and something like that so this man couldn't stand this uh, um you know interrogation and then <laughs> let me just let you watch what happened <laughs> in the budget line in 2019 where you derive that power to spend that money that's the question i'll, I'll, I'll provide that answer for you 
I will check. I don't want to lie on that oath. I will provide the answer for you. Uh, Andy. <laughs> Andy. Andy. Yes, sir. I know you are a very learned person. You are one of the most learned person in this room. You don't. You don't have answer for it now. Okay. It means you spent money. Can you agree with us? Will it be right for us to say that you did? Extra budgeted expenses, which was not budgeted for. Uh, I will not say so. Um, let me ask my EDP to explain, because I don't want to. I think he has more facts concerning that. Is he on that oath? Okay, it's not on that oath. No. That's why I said I will provide the answer. I said I will provide the answer. Now, uh, Andy. You have the budget with you. The budget of 2019, you have it with you. Correct. And the 2019 budget, in which you have told this committee that you is the budget you are operating on, you have it. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I said I will provide the answer to you. No. You have the budget with you. In front of me, yes, sir. The budget. The budget you are operating. 2019 budget. I will provide the answer, Mr. Chairman, sir. No. We'll bring this to you, sir. Ah! We'll bring this to you. It will be sent to your committee. Andy. Andy. Mr. Chairman, sir. Andy. Mr. Chairman, sir. The budget of 2019, you tendered it. Yeah. I tendered the. You tendered the budget of 2019. Yeah. I give the letter. From that is not the budget. That's not the budget we signed. The budget we signed for you in 2019, you have it here. Okay, they said they have gone to make up his. I think I will provide this to you. Okay, you don't, for you don't have the budget here. Yes, I don't have it. Here. You don't have the budget I here. I don't have it here. It will be provided to you. Is the 2019 budget, which, as you know, and as we know, ended May 31st, 2020. We are now in July. So you are not expected to be spending money from budget 2019 that expired. From where are you going to spend this money you said here on court that you are preparing to pay students who are on scholarship? Are you aware that every expenditure you make from 31st May till date are not are not so my people have you seen have you seen what is going on i mean this is neither that our people uh, this is Niger Delta money that is supposed to develop the region, that is supposed to uh, train, you know, pay for scholarship, fund training for the youths so that they will not be uh, very militant and all those kind of a thing. But these few people are just calling billions. And the number of money that they are calling is in the billions. Uh, I think a total of about 40 billion Naira. That's what they are talking about. And I don't even understand how that's uh, these people will be spending this money that's uh, supposed to be for the region and then at the end of the day they will say it's house of Fulani, house of Fulani and you know, I don't know if you people saw this picture, you see these pictures that were circulating uh, on the media, they say look at the Niger Delta people look at them living in squalor and look at the real owners of Nigeria, look at the way they are living, but who is responsible for it, if the government is, uh, you know uh, the Northerners are in, in, in control of the NDDC and spending all the money 
money you know you are you are going to be saying okay look at all what they have done I, i've been in the south side and i've been to the north the roads are just two different ways apart so if you uh, embezzle all the money that is supposed to be for the roads for the infrastructures in this region and the other people are also embezzling the money but they are at least building infrastructure even though there are people who are impoverished but you know this is the region that that the, the oil is coming from and this development commission and this ministry is dedicated for this region why are they looting this money and even the worst part is people are already coming to support akpabio the minister of um uh this uh niger data uh, ministry i don't know i'm not saying you should not support anybody i personally actually see akpabio as a very very good man that has done well because i saw the nakwa ibom state so in my mind i see akpabio as a governor that has foresight that has even done beyond any Igbo governor that you can say maybe abia like abia is even abia is just a stone throw to uyobot i mean the transformation so i have akpabio in a very high regard because even when i see the airport and uh, when uh, you you can't even recognize the roads like the city of uyo uh, all around uyo uh, like when you are going from uyo to abak i have a, a pretty good uh, knowledge of this uh, part of the country because i have been there i, I lived there for a while uh, when i served so i was uh, like uh, seeing the pictures i really marveled that uh, you know this man could do so well so i like it's almost like a nightmare to see him in this kind of a uh, um corruption scandal because this is not how i thought he would be you know and again another thing that is sad is when you look at what they have done uh, or all this money that they are talking about this misappropriated funds is in the billions and let me even give you some glimpse of the money that they are talking about here 1.5 billion naira for covid relief 1.2 billion for conspiracy i mean you can just read through this uh, this uh, slides or even post it so you can see for yourself like these are just uh, some of the money that they are talking about you see So my people, I don't know what to make out of all this. So imagine a professor, he cannot answer question. Budget is now acting like, a, and now the uh, you know the speaker Baja Biamila has said they are not going to be inviting him back to the panel. That they apologize for the stuffy conditions in this hall. That the place was stuffy, so it was understandable that he was uh, fainting. Uh, so you know, saying that of course that it's possible that he was not not pretending that it was a real uh, deal that he was fainting and that they are not going to require him to come back he's just going to provide the papers the documents and that they are not even uh, like doing inquisition or uh, adversarially uh, questioning him like an enemy like it's just that they are fact finding they just want to find out the facts so what are you going to do with the facts like the person that is asking and the person that they are asking you see it's almost like uh, when you put all of them together now they said even this man that is the chairman of this committee uh, that he's also been accused of corruption and he has resigned he has recused himself from this committee and that he's available for uh, um, you know for probing or for investigation so it's just a circus it's a circus my people it's a circus well you know who is bearing the brunt of all these things is the local people who have to be militants who are agitating who have nothing so much poverty no food no water nothing is available and everybody is saying the full and need the full and need the full and need the not the not the not so obviously the not is not the problem of the south the the south behold your problem these are your own people your own brothers and your sister and it's not enough for you to say uh, those people in the north uh, is it not their it's not their oil now it is our oil but it doesn't matter if it is still your oil and you have access to it and you cannot use it to better the lot of your people so what is the difference if somebody else is 
is taking it to their place. Eh? It's not like the the money is even circulating. There's any local circulation of that embezzled from within their locality. You know, there's nothing like that. No, nothing, nothing like that. Everything is being taken out. They take it out to the overseas. They do, you know. So all these are there are allegations, of course, but we see how massive it is. And the important thing to note is that they are being done by niger data people so even my state in state is in this niger data commission but we don't have anything from it no road the same thing all across the east all, all across the south side and um when i was in in uyo that time the road from Aba to to uh, uyo was so bad so i'm sure maybe they will probably all faced that end of the road and uh, when i went to calabar the roads were even better i don't know what is going on i think that if you are from the niger data it is time for you to hold your own leaders accountable they are just instigating you to say fulani fulani the fulani is not your problem the yoruba is not your problem look at your problem your leaders hold them if you hold your leaders then if they don't have enough from their government they should ask for more support from their government it is not the role of the people to be talking about uh, hatred of fulani and saying it is the fulani that is doing us no it's obvious. Eh? If you go to Aba, Aba is a mess. It's Igbo man that is ruling there. It's not Fulani man. Tell him to do his job. Nobody is saying it. Every day they will say Fulani, Fulani. The damage that is being done in that Aba, the, the health crisis, everything that all those uh, garbage, all those, like this, the, the, the city of Aba looks like a place that has been abandoned, like nobody lives there. And I feel that if you have a governor, you have a sitting representative in the Senate, it's not enough for them to be blowing grandma in Abuja and calling out Buari and calling Fulani. No, I think that this one that is also happening is another Fulani that they need to take care of it. Yes, they have to take care of it. They cannot just sit down there and be uh, <laughs> pointing fingers, you know. So what am I saying? It is time for us to ask ourselves this question. Is it really the Fulani that is holding us down? Or is it our own people that is holding us down? It's just like when we hear uh, Black Lives Matter, you hear all this subjugation that is happening uh, against black people in the in Europe. Who is subjugating black people, fellow Africans, fellow tribes people in, in Nigeria, for example? Their own people. So these are the neocolonialists. They are doing colonialism on the head of their people and causing all this suffering, causing all this flight from the country, causing all this desperation, they should be held accountable. None of them is good, as long as the country is in a bad state. So if we can hold them accountable and stop singing their praise, you know, and start uh, and stop feeling that, oh, they are persecuting him because he's not from the north, it doesn't matter. Is he doing what he's supposed to do? Is the state in the condition it's supposed to be? Are the schools in the condition they're supposed to be? That is supposed to be your own preoccupation. Not all this tribal, sentimental uh, agitation of uh, who is from whose tribe and uh, who is getting better and who is getting appointments, you know? Uh, so if the, if the politicians are fighting for uh, positions, it should not be your pro problem as an ordinary citizen. You should be uh, concerned with what are you getting from all these their uh, you know struggles and quambles for for position. You know because it, it, it comes down to what is the need for the for the masses. What dividends is there for the masses? You as an Igbo, you as an Yoruba, you as uh, an acquired bomb, you as an ethic what is there for you when they get any position is it enough because they just bear your your tribal name and they are just from your state and that they have this position how does that trickle down to you as an individual so yeah maybe i'll have to say something more on this uh, uh, corruption scandal as we continue to uh, to see how the government is going to handle it i mean um even it's not like the north are better because i heard that the nmpc in the north that they have spent billions and they are not like they are running losses of billions and and they are not producing any sense like you know they are they just pay salaries and they but no output they just make all these expenditures and gain salaries and gain money but they don't make any output no output at all 
So this is the reality of Nigeria. So I feel that our own Black Lives Matter will, should be to address this kind of endemic corruption. Because when you are talking about individuals that are doing fraudulent things, eh, this is the root of it. Because when they are looking at these people, stealing from the masses and flaunting it, and without that wealth, nobody regards you, nobody gives a hoot about who you are. Everybody is pushed into this bus to go and make it at all costs. So, uh, I mean, the thing is so much to talk about, but I'll just have to stop here so that I don't drag this video too long. So I hope that you like this video. Uh, let's hear your own opinion, share your thoughts and, uh, and opinion in the comment section. And yeah, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye for now. Bye.